Did you know there was a sequel to Rankin Bass's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? And I don't mean the two sort of sequels actually made by Rankin Bass. No, there was a more direct sequel made in 2001 by Good Times. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? You would think after their massive failure with Rudolph the movie in theaters, Good Times Entertainment would want to stay away from the red-nosed reindeer, but no, they instead thought, well, maybe this will work if we just make a sequel to an already beloved Christmas special by many. Don't worry though, Good Times isn't going to attempt stop motion, instead Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and the Island of Misfit Toys is brought to you in glorious 3D. And by glorious, I of course mean the double whammy of it being both early 2000s and cheap 3D. Woohoo! A sequel to the Rankin-Bass Rudolph movie made 37 years later by Good Times Entertainment in CG. What could possibly go wrong? I can't finish that. So besides Kathleen Barr still providing the voice of Rudolph in this, it doesn't have any connection with Good Times' Rudolph the movie. Well, except if you lived in Germany, where they confusingly named this Rudolph 2. And displayed the 98 movie's version of the character. I don't know whether that'd be a good or bad surprise once they found out what this actually was. One of the things I can give this movie, though, is that it does actually have most of the characters from the original Rudolph special that the actual Rankin-Bass sequels with Rudolph omitted. So in this movie, we actually have Clarice, Bumble, Yukon Cornelius, and Hermie. Now, this movie was pretty close to the end of Good Times' run, but they were still attempting to get these things over with some celebrity voices. So, we've got Richard Dreyfus has Scoop the Snowman, who replaces Sam the Snowman for whatever reason. Jamie Lee Curtis as the pink hippo fairy thing. And Rick Moranis as the black mage toy taker. Once again, Gary Chalk lends his voice to a Good Times monstrosity as Santa and Bumble. And this time, Scott McNeil's voice actually made it to the final cut as he was a lot of characters. Primarily, though, he was Hermie and Yukon Cornelius, and he really gets these voices pretty spot on. You're going to stay with me, and we'll all be rich! Famous? Why, he's a legend! Hey, what do you say we both be independent together, huh? Behold, the wonders of the Toothmobile, my all-terrain mobile dental facility. Unfortunately, the voice work is pretty much the only high point in this cheap cash-in sequel. I guess at least Good Times figured out a new way to cash in on something before they died. I love that they kept their glorious big screen logo. Truly something came of that box office bomb. And listen to that lovely Good Times jingle with it. Well, that really is the best track in the movie, but I think we can give it something a little more appropriate based on the music we're about to hear. I hate you again, you hurt it first! I love this way, the man is under rehearsal! I hate music! I think it's the worst! Terrifying. Catchy tune, huh? What, that barely existent flute thing? I never would have thought about that ever if you hadn't have asked that asinine question. The reason this is supposed to be a catchy tune is that it's what Orko's loser father here, the toy taker, is using to, well, take toys. Oh, Dad. First you help spawn me, and now this. I'd get my buddy He-Man after you, but we've got some real threats to take care of, like Plundor. The whole world was up in arms. 
Yes, of all the disasters on this planet, nothing has really hit such global significance as a few children having their super generic toys stolen. Why, if it weren't for Christmas Town's favorite reindeer son, who knows what might have. <laughs> I don't like creepy Petto the Snowman. Now, you didn't think Rudolph's story ended that foggy Christmas Eve, did you? Well, I kind of hoped. As we say in the North Pole, that was just the tip of the iceberg. The whoopee iceberg. <laughs> Actually, forget that movie. It never happened. I've got a nose for news. Ain't it a beaut? Big hit at barbecues, too. Why? Wasn't that long ago, in fact. It all started. Wait, he flashed back, but is still standing around explaining events in the past? What the holiday hell is your framing device, snowman? You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. Yes, I recall how they were all the exact same model, except Comet wore a hat and a whistle because that's what he wore as a coach in the thing this is cashing in on, so obviously he never takes those off. You had to resort to animation loops on 3D models barely six minutes in. Good times! Now this movie is set after the events of the original Rankin Bass movie, so Rudolph seems to have de aged a bit here. I'd give this thing more crap for that, though, if Rankin Bass hadn't have done the same thing in their sequels as well. I guess Rudolph was just too old and ugly to ever reuse again at this point. Ugh. Anyway, Santa is an imbecile and plugged all of the lights into a single socket. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was hilarious, Santa. I tell you, the joint was jumping. Of course, I wasn't invited to the party, but I enjoyed peering through the windows like a creeper more anyway. <laughs> the elves seem to have taken a poison mushroom or two since the last movie. Either that or Mrs. Claus really fattened up Santa, and herself too, considering how they now tower over the elves. Rudolph now decides it's a good time to get some flirting in with Clarice because they only resume any relationship stuff between them around Christmas. The rest of the year, Rudolph's damn nose gives her a headache. Just you and me. No. Oh, ho, 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 ho. No. Wow, look at the majestic flying. It doesn't look like a 3D model just awkwardly floating around at all. Speaking of... What the shit was that? The kite abomination flew around Hermie the Ripper's trailer in this shot, and then he's just suddenly at the door. Then again, maybe he wasn't even supposed to disappear here, as some of the details suddenly change once he does. The dentist is out! Try the Christmas Town snowball. First castle on your left. <laughs> you better get going quick before you find an unwanted carrot in one of your holes. <laughs> also, I can interact with people in the story despite me telling the story like it's in the past to the audience. Try to figure that one out. <laughs> uh, Mr. Rudolph, sir, may I have your autograph? Sure, 20 bucks. I really gotta wonder why Bumble is still hanging around these people who pulled out all of his teeth. I doubt Hermie doped him up for that, so that was probably some excruciating pain. Plus, if he wasn't in the North Pole, he probably would have bled out from his mouth and died. Just something to think about while you're watching the Rudolph special, you know? Being famous is swell and all, but all I ever wanted was- Blow your nose, Rudolph. Yeah! Take it all! Do the retirement! 
So, yeah, to make Rudolph hate his nose again, now it's just the fact that he has to do tricks with it and sign autographs for assholes that he's getting sick of. That stupid kite comes in, though, ruining the exploitation of Rudolph and asks Hermie to come to the Island of Misfit Toys because King Moonracer has a toothache. You remember him, that flying lion who has a giant castle but still makes all the Misfit Toys Toys sleep outside in the cold. So I suppose it really is in his character to have sent this kite to make the dentist come to him instead of flying over himself. Why I'm a misfit toy? I'm afraid of heights. Ain't it tragic? Actually. Ooh, you just got actually. Actually, I don't think this movie was all that bad. Actually, actually, actually. I'd give anything for a normal nose. Ah, uh, you gotta love when character progression is really character regression. Keep your chin up, keep your shoulders back, and face the world with pride. So what if you're a little bit different? I missed the songs in the 98 Rudolph movie. I know I called them unmemorable, but fuck, they were wonderful compared to this auditory diarrhea. We're just a little bit, just a little. Wait a second, who's driving? Ah, whoopee iceberg! <laughs> Well, it has been a good five seconds since the last song. That's some good pacing. On the island of misfit toys. Oh! The island of misfit toys. Toys, toys, toys. We're on the island of misfit toys. She reads and reads and reads and reads until her eyeballs hurt and then pay treats some more. What a great song. I was kind of lost on which island they might have gone to in Rudolph and the Island of Misfit Toys, but thank fuck they made sure to beat it into my head. The Island of Misfit Toys, oh, the Island of Misfit Toys, 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 we're on the Island of Misfit Toys, 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 toys. How are there misfit toys here again anyway? Santa fixed this mess he made last year by finally giving these oddball toys a home, but apparently he didn't learn his lesson and just started exiling these sentient toys to an island again. Fucking old Saint Prick. I'm the boomerang that doesn't come back! <laughs> Guess he's dead. I'm all empty inside. Well, it was nice of them to include how they felt while writing this. Well, not quite as majestic this time round. Oh, the pain. I heard that Island of Misfit Toys song. That was awful. Let's have a look-see at those pearly white, um, fangs, shall we? Mm -mm. What? He already had his mouth opened for Hermie, then refuses? Did they animate the scene before reading the entire script? Alright, Hermie's doing the lion's teeth, have him open his mouth. Oh, and then he refuses. Okay, just have him shut his mouth after. We ain't redoing any of that shit. Wider. Well, your teeth are looking awfully red. Someone hasn't been brushing. That hurt. Uh-uh. That? Uh-uh. How about... Please, don't tell me I need a root canal. You need a root canal. That setup was more painful than my toothache. This won't hurt a bit. Mom. You didn't give him anything to numb the pain there, Hermie. That's gonna hurt a lot. Can't be too careful with this toy taker on the loose. Of course, if I actually wanted my toys to be secure, I probably shouldn't have had that skylight installed, which automatically opens from the outside. Looks like rough weather ahead. I'd kind of hate to miss my date with Maurice. 
Nat Doe certainly has you head over hooves, doesn't she? Who told you? You told him, Rudolph, a second ago. What, can you not even be bothered to follow this damn thing? It was graduation day at the Elf Academy of Dental Arts. Elf Academy of Dental Arts. Your whole plot in the original movie was that it was weird that you were an elf who wanted to be a dentist. An elf dentist? I've never heard of such a... Oh, wait, we have an academy for that, right? I guess you and Rudolph really have nothing to bond over. Congratulations, Hermie. And that's when I died, and everything after has just been my dying last thoughts. That's really lame, Hermie. Then it hit. The North Pole unfurled its fiercest frozen fury. Of course, I could go tell someone that they are out in the storm, because despite me telling the story, I'm also confusingly in it, but that cut into my leering through the windows time. <laughs> Oh, early crap 3D animation, you hold up so well. All of your equipment is destroyed, Hermie. Damn! Man, I don't know if Rudolph can handle storms. Has he ever done that before? Where are we? Who knows? Oh! Who goes there? You're not toys! Look who's talking, gingerbread arsehole. Well, he agrees to take them across the river Styx, leading to my favorite Rudolph movie, Rudolph Goes to Hell, which in turn sets up for the classic Rudolph vs. Frosty. Whoever wins will forget. You gotta love that jerky animation for the cookie here. Looks like every movement this guy makes is pure torture. Ow, 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 ow! You come to steal Camilla's fabulous toys! Yes, I wouldn't want any toys to escape before my doctors are done mutilating them in the name of cookie science. Why would we- Silence! Before I mount you over that mantle lickety split. Well, there's certainly more threats to decapitate Rudolph in this movie, which I can get behind. Guards, throw them in the dungeon for 300 years. <gasps> wow, this pink hippo is a tyrant. I sure hope they depose this mad woman before the movie's over. Get him, boys! Oh no, cookies! Throw some milk! <laughs> Well, that was easy. Let go! It's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer! So Rudolph's red nose has saved him again, and what lesson has he learned? That he should get rid of it, of course. You can give me a normal nose? Sure, why not trust the crazy hippo who performs mad experiments in her underground bunker who has threatened to kill you twice already? Before... She's apparently been dreaming of cutting up Rudolph's nose for a while now. You two should really question why she already had those slides prepared. And, uh, why she didn't know it was Rudolph at first when she already had pictures of him. Oh wait, I'm just being silly. It's too hard to tell that he's the red-nosed reindeer until he turns the light on. My bad. Take Caribou to operating room number two. Caribou, you just call them Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's Rudolph the Red-Nosed Caribou. Well, I guess that shows me. But what if it's another foggy Christmas Eve? Santa can't afford headlights, darling. Can't argue with that. And what do you know, he made it home just in time to keep his date with Clarice. And of course I'm gonna spy on them from the bushes. 
<laughs> Rudolph decides there is nothing sexier for a date than teaching Clarice how to fly. I don't really know if I want to know what Comet did that made Rudolph associate these things. Also, I suppose Comet didn't teach Clarice how to fly because he's completely useless now. Anyway, Clarice isn't too good at flying yet because she's weighed down too much by Hanna-Barbera sound effects. <laughs> I'm so ordinary, and you're so famous. <laughs> Rudolph is only a B-list Christmas celeb. I won't be so famous after I get my nose fixed. And I love your nose, and everything about you. You do? I thought I knew that already, but I guess I forgot when I de-aged. He loves me! He loves me! I always thought we needed to actually get a scene where Rudolph and Clarice said I love you because I was so unsure of where those two were heading. Thanks for answering that question that no one asked 37 years ago. You're flying! You better come to the castle, you two. Something wrong, Coach Comet? You just put me out of a job! I'm afraid it's going to be a toyless Christmas this year. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Someone must have seen something last night. I did. I was up late reading last night. It was my favorite book, Jelf Mossy Jello Well A Call of Well, it looked like a giant flying football. I thought I was just seeing things. <laughs> that did not require a flashback. Off with his head! You again! Actually, I'm a dentist now. Actually! Wait, what? You again? Actually, I'm a dentist now. So, I guess he should have said, You DDS again. You no account, Rebel! You left my staff one elf short! All right, you can open up a dentist office. You'd better be nice. One of these days, you'll need a dentist. I wouldn't let you touch my choppers with a ten-foot pole! Oh, dear. I better set up an appointment for you week from Tuesday. It was hard for them to keep continuity because who even had time to watch the original special before they rushed out this sequel? I found something. <laughs> it's pure. Out of business? What happened? I insisted on using Comic Sans for my sign and no one would take me seriously! How about helping us catch the toy taker? Well, what are we waiting for? Wahoo! It's great when the actors put emotion into the delivery, but the animation doesn't support it, so it just comes off kind of awkward. Welcome to your new home. Well, what was wrong with our old hose? They were infested with children. All right, I'm beginning to see the toy taker's point here. The toy taker, that's me, will take care of you. And you, and you, and you, and you. Ugh, but not you. The Toy Taker's song here is definitely the best of the bunch, though I suppose that's not saying a lot, but still, it's a lot better than Toys, 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 we're on the island of misfit toys. We're gonna catch that crook. And get all the toys back, too. Spoiler alert, they didn't. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Rudolph hatches a plan to hide with the toys on the Island of Misfit Toys as they've calculated that will be the Toy Taker's next target and their base of operations, and we certainly wouldn't want someone taking these toys that Santa has banished to freeze on an island. Rudolph must have also cheated and just looked at the script as he didn't know that the Toy Taker called toys with his magic flute, but apparently was perfectly prepared for that. Don't worry, Mr. Kite. We're here to rescue you. <laughs> 
Well, Rudolph only figured that the flute lured them. I guess not that it also brainwashed them. That's one powerful song. Guess it's way more catchy than I previously thought. You're not toys. Of course, that probably should have been obvious to me in the first place that this was real, but these shitty untextured models kind of make it hard to tell. Ta-ta! Oh no, they'll die! Oh yeah, flying reindeer. That sure was a non-issue. Didn't you already? Oh, whatever. Darn, darn, darn! You should probably keep that door locked, especially when you're flying. After Yukon Cornelius fucks the blimp up, Rudolph and Clarice chase the toy taker off to the peppermint mine while leaving Hermie to try and save everyone on the crashing air vehicle. So the two that can fly left the impending air disaster to the guy who can't. That's when Rudolph gets visited by the ghosts of Rudolph Past and... Nah, just kidding, he'll always be Rudolph the Red-Nosed Asshole. Well, instead of those two thoughtless morons later discovering that they had left their friend to die, the Bumblegeyser Bunny saves the day by catching the blimp with his would-be murderer on it. <laughs> those are some explosive lanterns. Oh no, they're gonna die! Oh yeah, it wasn't an issue again. You'll never catch me! Oh, they caught me, that was easy. Let's see who he really is. Rudolph Doodolph do, where are you? <laughs> That's it. Pay no attention to the teddy bear behind the cloak. You've lost a lot of stuffing, son. My story begins a long, long time ago. No. And I was a bear wrapped in beautiful paper. Double no! And Stephen played with me all day long. He'd sleep with me tied in his arms. This is barely a song, it's just sing-talking, basically. I was a present and my kid really liked me and things were really good. But then they weren't and he threw me away and I rotted in the dump. They threw me out, yes they threw me out. Well, someone saw Toy Story 2. Rudolph flew Mr. Cuddles to Castaway Cove, where Queen Camilla personally supervised his makeover. Oh well, I had no investment in saving this bear. Still want that nose job? Well... Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Oh yeah, I don't because of that thing that happened in the original movie. But don't worry, maybe someone else will make another sequel 37 years after this and I'll forget my backstory again. And now that Santa is getting ready for his Christmas run, of course Clarice is not a part of the team because... This is man's work. Yeah, you might have thought her whole learning how to fly thing would have been leading to her actually being a part of Santa's team at the end, but that only would have made sense, so nope. The Tooth Fairy. Ready for our date? Is this really necessary? Why is this happening? Hermie banged the Tooth Fairy. Never forget. Steven never meant to throw you away. He was saving you as a family heirloom. This is the happiest day of my life. What the hell? I thought I threw this away years ago. Well, was
Was this movie worth the 37 year wait or what? This movie just looks awful. So many untextured polygons just floating around, and some of the few things they do give any texture to just look awkward. Most of the songs are terrible, and the story is just a cluttered mess. They have plot threads that go nowhere, and characters' horrible actions are just forgotten a bit too easily. This movie might be interesting to some just because it brings back these characters from the original Rudolph stop motion special, but it's just a shame it wasn't in a better story. But I do feel that I've learned a real lesson with this movie. Throw out the right Rudolph, stupid old man. 